Humans are born with the largest brains in proportions to their body size on the planet. With over 86 billion neurons, an adult brain consumes nearly 20% of body's total energy. However, our brain's impressive capabilities seem quite minuscule in front of the mammoth input it is tasked to process. Our world is way more diverse than what our 1.2 kg brain can handle. And so evolution came up with an ingenious way to help our brains prioritize what to focus on. In plain English, this phenomenon is called attention. So what is attention? After decades of research, Dr. Hal Pashler, a professor of psychology at the University of California, summarized our understanding of the phenomenon in the following words. No one knows what attention is. At least, not in its entirety. But we do have some clues. After all, it's a wild world out there. And so, our brains evolved to prioritize the things that gave our ancestors a better shot at survival. Let's sift through a few examples. Take a look at this picture. What grabbed your attention the most? Most likely, that tiny island even though much of the picture covers the ocean and the sky. What about this picture? Was it the pair of jellyfish and the top light source? Our attention gets drawn to things that distinctly pop out from the background. Psychologists call it the pop-out effect. And this is partially why our eyes evolved to see colors. Take a look at this picture. Can you spot the predator? Well, if you can't, you're probably dead by now. How about now? And this is why great presentations immediately grab your attention by having the most important information pop out as opposed to their more amateur counterparts. What else does our mind prioritize us to focus on? Movement. Your brain prioritizes animate objects. If a stranger rapidly approaches you, your attention will be pulled towards him instantaneously. Similarly, your brain will pay more attention to a giant ball moving towards you than if it were stationary or moving away. And then comes a critical piece to the attention equation. Novelty. Ever wondered why babies often prefer random household items over old toys? No matter how expensive those toys are, they get bored of them pretty quickly. Psychologists call this Habituation. The following experiment was directed by Professor Peter Winchin of the College of William and Mary, and it tests the phenomenon of habituation in infants. This baby is presented with random new objects and the time she stares at them is recorded. When first presented with a spice jar and a watch, the baby stares at them for 33 seconds before looking away. Each time the same object is presented, her gaze duration reduces drastically. After showing the object nearly four times, her gaze duration approaches zero seconds. In other words, they no longer are worthy of her attention. Now, attention is just a makeshift strategy that evolution came up with to optimize brain's energy consumption. It therefore comes with a hefty price. While your brain shines spotlight to the object of attention, you become partially blind to everything else. In psychology, this is called the spotlight effect. Oh, the shine of a thousand spotlights All oh, the stars we steal from the night sky will never be enough And 
while you are fixated at Carl Loxley's beautiful performance, unexpected things might happen. When paying attention to one thing, our brain can practically zone out. And many times, this could be dangerous. In 1999, two American psychologists put forth a groundbreaking experiment, the invisible gorilla. Let's take a variation of the test. Your task is to count the number of passes that the white team makes. Ready? So how many passes did the white team make? If your answer is 13, great job! Now, coming to a more important question. Did you see the moonwalking bear? About 50% people miss the bear. When your brain is paying attention to one task, it becomes partially blind to everything else. There is a term for it. Inintentional blindness. Did you see any ducks in the video? What? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Did you see any ducks in the video? No. <laughs> <laughs> Magicians use this all the time, except they call it misdirection. Take a look at this magic trick performed by Dr. Gustav Kuhn of the University of London. Now that was impressive. The lighter seemed to have disappeared in thin air, except it was not even a trick. Have a look again, but this time only pay attention to his right hand. While you were misdirected to the left hand, he simply dropped the lighter in his right hand. Similarly, check out this popular public stunt performed by Smoothini. He pours drink in his hand, and poof, it disappears, reappearing in his other hand. Pretty cool, huh? So, how did it blow the audience's mind away? Two awesome YouTube channels explain it using a thumb-shaped container. You wear it on the left hand, and use it to hold the liquid or any other substance for that matter. Now, to hide it from you, you form a fist and gently pull your thumb out. Transferring the container between hands is plain dexterity of fingers. And voila, it reappears in the other hand. But that is only half the trick. Notice how he misdirects the audience's attention away from the hand with the artificial thumb. That is the name. Whoa. They don't notice a thing. But my all-time favorite happens to be a pickpocket. Here is his TED Talk. But attention is what steers your perceptions, is what controls your reality. It's the gateway to the mind. If you don't attend to something, you can't be aware of it. Now, for my job, I have to play with techniques to exploit this, to play with your attention as a limited resource. So if I could control how you spend your attention, if I could maybe steal your attention through a distraction. And then he goes on to demonstrate it. You had something inside your front pocket. Do you remember what it was? Check your pocket, see if it's still there. Is it still there? <laughs> oh, that's where it was. Go ahead and put it away. We're just shopping. This trick's more about the timing, really. I'm going to try to push it inside your hand. Put your other hand on top for me, would you? 
It's amazingly obvious now, isn't it? It looks a lot like the watch I was wearing, doesn't it? By making him attend to his wallet, the man gets robbed of his watch. Now, a very important use of attention is learning new skills. This is me learning one of my first Kung Fu forms from a Shaolin master. My mind is paying attention to a lot of things. Shifu's instructions, my stances, the stab. Thinking about all those things makes me slow and shaky, just like this video. Now here is how Shaolin masters train. So how are the masters able to perform so flawlessly? As if their mind is not even pausing to think. As if their muscles have a mind or a memory of their own. In his famous book, Dr. Kahneman explains that our mind can be divided into two systems. The conscious and the subconscious mind. The conscious mind takes on the seat of intelligence. It holds the reins. It is wise, rational, and reliable. And it helps in driving your life towards defined set of goals. It does most of your logical thinking and is great at complex planning and organization. It wanders. It analyzes conflicting information and debates but it's also slow with limited capacity and requires a lot of effort to pull things through. What it needs is a companion with way more horsepower. The subconscious mind is wild and involuntary. It is extremely fast with an enormous memory capacity. And that makes it vastly more powerful. But it's also wild, short-sighted and impressionable. And hence requires a lot of taste. For each new skill that is learned, the conscious mind kicks into full action. In other words, it creates a neural pathway. Hello Sport Neuroscience explains this using a beautiful animation. When you're learning a new skill, say driving, your brain is like a thick forest with no pathway for that skill. The conscious mind therefore has to meticulously chart a pathway for the subconscious mind to follow. This creates narrow pathways in your brain related to driving. Since the conscious mind is slow but limited working memory, despite your intense focus, your driving is jerky and unstable, and it feels overwhelming to pay attention to so many things, the brakes, the accelerator, the road. With more practice, however, your subconscious mind begins to get a hang of it. Until eventually, it no longer needs directions from the conscious mind. Your neural pathway is now a full-blown highway. When that happens, you drive on autopilot even without consciously thinking about it. And if that skill is playing the piano, your fingers now seem to move automatically. People often call it being in the flow or muscle memory. You've now mastered this skill. 
it's time to unleash your horse before the world. In this video, we covered various facets of attention and how crucial it is to our intelligence. We can't truly understand a subject, however, until expressed in the universal language of the cosmos, mathematics. The field that attempts at expressing intelligence in math is often called machine learning. In 2017, a paper by Google bearing the title Attention is All You Need attempted to do just that. And it revolutionized the field of machine language understanding. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman haircut for a client. Um... On this channel, I've uploaded a series explaining the intuition behind this paper in a fun and simple manner. If you are new to the field of AI, however, that series may be a bit advanced for you. And so stay tuned as I upload more videos explaining the fundamentals so that we embark on this journey together. As for the ancient question, Who am I? You are what you pay attention to. 